So I am so happy to be here with all of you. Um, my name is Hunter. I am one of the moderators and facilitators and hosts here at Power to Fly. I'm filling in for Meg Alexander. Unfortunately, she's under the weather. I hope she feels well soon. I'm sending you lots of love, Meg. I adore you. Um, and I hope I make you proud today. Um, but I'm super stoked to be uh, uh, with an amazing panel here from Yelp. You know Yelp. We've all used Yelp. Yelp is awesome and the people there are awesome and they're going to talk about it, that today and um, we're going to learn so much. So before we jump in, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping Going to get a little broom here so you can participate. Please feel free to turn on your cameras. Francis would love that. Turn on your cameras, please. Okay, and then um, you, if you do chat, you will show up in the recording. Um, as I just said, this is being recorded. We're going to send you the link uh, with the follow-up email. Uh, you can write in the chat. You can write in the chat to the group. Please keep in mind that this is a safe space. Please feel free to uh, participate, whether you want to ask a question that I can relay to our panel, um, or if you want to ask something privately, you can go into the message box in the chat feature, select my name, Hunter, and then you can ask me, you can do a direct message that way, and I'll send it in red, and it'll be a little thing, and that way you can ask something anonymously, or... Um, if you, yeah, if you want me to ask the question for you, or if you have a concern, I'm happy to address it. We also have an amazing team here working on the back end can help us with any technical things as well. Um, and let's see, uh, yes, please feel free to participate and ask your questions in the chat. And uh, you can feel free to keep up with us on social media with Power to Fly, we're on all the things. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can follow uh, more talks and look at previous uh, summits and so many great resources uh, and so many great videos on uh, YouTube there. And now, super excited to uh, introduce our uh, panel. We have three people from Yelp today, which is so cool. And you all know Yelp. This is a little screenshot of um, their page on our Power to Fly website, which I highly recommend you go to, and you can check that out. As we know, uh, as we know that Yelp provides a one-stop local platform for consu for consumers to discover, connect, and transact with local businesses of all sizes by making it easy to request a quote, join a wait list, and make a reservation, appointment, or purchase. I use it all the time, um, you know. And of course, uh, good news: Yelp is hiring. So we're going to drop the link in the chat there and how you can go to that will be through the power to fly website which is right here you can see that little panel it says jobs there's a screenshot from when that was taken it says 406 there's lots of jobs so there's so many great things coming up and the uh link will be in the chat in three two one magic okay <laughs> so next up i'm so excited to introduce our panelists so we have yes francis Yes, I'm so excited as you are as you are also excited. So Dorothy Jung, Dorothy is an engineer manager for the admin engagement team, has been with Yelp for seven years and was previously a software engineer on various teams with the ads organization. She is currently the head of Awesome Women in Engineering, AEW. You might see some cool swag soon. And Europe was previous in Europe and was previously uh, a lead of the networking vertical. Prior to joining Yelp, Dorothy received her bachelor's in computer science and French from UC Berkeley. Dorothy is in London and enjoys traveling and doing yoga in her spare time. Okay. So then, yeah, there's Dorothy waving hi. Also, I love this too. Dorothy's got the, the black classic Yelp, you know, logo there too. Yes, yes, love some Yelp swag. Um, and then we have Surya Pillier. Uh, Surya is an engineer manager for the analytics infrastructure team and has been with Yelp for four years. She led Awesome Women in Engineering's AEW Reads program for three years and is now the Safe Spaces vertical lead. So awesome. Prior to Yelp, Sudia was an assistant professor for computer applications master's program at the University of Mumbai. Because of her background in academics, Sudia is passionate about continuous improvement for her and her team. I'm going to click without dropping a dog. Okay, great. And um, <laughs> juggling act. And for my next trick, 
Uh, Neva Mittal is uh, Neva is an engineering manager on the Reader's Experience team and was previously a full stack engineer on the same team. She led uh, the AWE's mentorship program for two years and is now the career development vertical lead. Prior to joining Yelp, she received her master's in computer science from Northern University. Uh, Northern, excuse me, from Northeastern University in Boston. And she has been at Yelp for five years and has recently moved to New York City. Hey neighbor, I'm in New York, where she spends her time exploring restaurants, cooking and meeting new people. So uh, please give a digital round of applause to our panel and welcome them here. Hi everyone, how are y'all today? Uh, Nivi, let's just, I'll start with you. Just say hello, um, how's it going? Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, it's going great. Uh, I'm super excited to be here uh, and help answer any questions. Um, so yeah, and everybody give uh, Hunter a big round of applause. Oh, you're great. sweet. Yeah, it's, it's for, I know it's for Francis. I know you say it's for me, but it's for Francis. We know, we know. And I, you know, I'm starting to love being that guy with the Chihuahua in the neighborhood. I'm just leaning into it. I got a little pink purse. I'm going full Legally Blonde. No questions asked. Okay, um, so uh, 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 Dorothy, would you like to say hi? Hello. Hi everyone, great to be here. Um, I'm in London right now, so it's six o'clock in the evening and we've been having some, uh, some sunny days recently, which is great. Oh, amazing, fantastic. Well, thank you for making the time this evening. That is so awesome of you. And Surya, would you like to say hello? Hey folks, um, super, super stoked to be here. I think Francis made my day and week probably. So my day is just starting. I'm in Vancouver, so Pacific time. And I have to say, I think I'll be smiling for the rest of the day. Oh, I love that. That is, I mean, he brings me so much joy and we got to share it, right? That's the point. Um, so I'll probably read at least one question in Francis's voice, but I'll save that to make sure that everyone stays logged on, but I know you're here for the panel, not for Francis. Um, okay, so uh, what we have is uh, pre-submitted questions that a lot of you submitted in advance. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna go down that list. If you have any questions that come up while we're uh, chatting, feel free, drop it in the chat and, um, me or the panel will take a look and we will answer your questions. So um, we can do this sort of round robin style, but also feel free as you know your team better than I do. If I ask you a question panel and you're like, oh, you know what, maybe pass that to Dorothy, like feel free to jump in or popcorn style, but I'll do my best to sort of, you know, spread it out, but uh, takes a village, right? So first question we had was what advice would you have liked to receive when you are starting your prefer professional journey in tech? So uh, Dorothy, how about we start with you? Yeah, I would say drawing on from my personal experience um, to not give up, um, especially when you face rejection. Um, when I was first starting to take um, computer science classes and trying to get an internship and break into the tech industry. Um, I received dozens of rejection emails after applying to a lot of different companies. Um, so Yelp definitely wasn't the first company that I applied to. And there's definitely a lot of learning experiences that you can gain from all of those rejections and all of the interview processes that you go through. Um, but it's important to just keep working at it and staying tenacious um, because at some point um, something sticked for me um, or it stuck for me. So I was able to kind of uh, get my first internship and get my foot in the door. So yeah, that would be the, the advice that I would give. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Uh, Nivi, would you like to... Uh think about what advice you would have um, liked to hear when you were starting your journey in tech. Absolutely. Plus, plus to what Dorothy said, I think that's super important um, to, to always kind of keep trying and keep trying till you kind of break that uh, barrier. I think for me personally, I feel like remaining curious or always staying curious is as important, uh, not just when you start out, but 
when you've been doing it for a while um, and you've been doing the same role for a while. So you've been a full stack engineer. How do you stay curious and keep it interesting, whether it's changing teams, changing roles, understanding more about how you can have an impact? Um, it's, it's one of the best ways to not only understand what your reach is and what you can do, but it also enables you to understand how the rest of your team works, how product managers work, designers work, uh, et cetera. And that makes you uh, a better engineer um, or whatever role you're in uh, going forward. So staying curious, asking questions often uh, to the people around you who are part of your team. Oh, that's such good advice. Thank you, Nibby. And Surya, what advice uh, would you like to bestow to your past? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, if only I had a time machine, but, and I knew these folks before, I would have loved to hear these pieces of advice uh, like before. Anyways, um, drawing from my experience, so I was part of the academic world, I was an assistant professor, where you have a lot of women uh, in those roles as a teacher, as a professor, as a researcher. But the moment you step into the tech industry, uh, it's no secret that it's like 70% and up male. Uh, that's the last stat that I saw. Um, it's very easy to doubt your ability, question whether you belong, question whether you have uh, the um, what it takes to succeed in this industry and like not be upfront about voicing your opinion, uh, doubt yourself, not, not raising your point in meeting rooms and things like that. I wish somebody at the beginning of my tech career told me that you're not alone. Uh, be kind to yourself and you know you belong here as much as anybody else. Um, it's much later after I became a part of this ERG that is either awesome women in engineering that I came to know that, oh, there's a term for it. It's called imposter syndrome. And it's not uncommon. Like every other person that you know probably goes through the same thing. So I would have loved to know that. Oh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Just the fact of knowing we're not alone is invaluable, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So thank you for that, for that first round. And I hope that was helpful for everyone. Uh, it's certainly helpful was for their past selves. So I hope it's helpful for our present selves. Um, so what are the next question that we have that was uh, from uh, folks pre-submitted was what are the consequences you've seen for not having women in leadership positions in tech. And they followed up with what might change if women continue to occupy these positions of power, or rather what might change if they um, you know, continue and expand and grow as we see more of that. Um, Dorothy, would you like to jump in? Yeah, sure. Um, I think all companies are trying to kind of build the best product possible um, and definitely uh, like the users of your product and um, trying to like make something that's accessible to everyone um, and like hits that target audience is great from a business standpoint. Um, and I think that comes from like business leaders and folks in leadership who are making executive decisions to try and drive the product in a way um, where it has the greatest consumer reach. So from a business standpoint, I feel like if the folks in leadership aren't representative of the demographics that you're trying to build for, then you end up limiting your product um, and eventually uh, you're greatly limiting the kinds of opportunities that you could have for the company as a whole. Um, so I think that's a very like pragmatic way of looking at things like Here's kind of the practical business side consequences of it. Um, but just from seeing the culture at Yelp um, and how inclusive and diverse it is, um, I think it just makes it a more enjoyable place to work. I feel like I can relate um, to other women leaders in a way that's um, more on a level that I can be open and vulnerable at work. Um, and so I think kind of achieving that critical mass of women in leadership roles um, definitely creates a more welcoming environment, which then has this feedback loop of um, like even more women joining that environment. So I think if we were to have more women leaders, that's the kind of compounded effect we might have. Um, I feel like that was kind of a long answer. <laughs> so I might uh, pass it on over to um, 
one of the other panelists. And a beautiful answer. Thank you so much and inspiring. Thank you. Uh, Nivi or Surya, would you like to pop in? Uh, I can act. So something that I thought about was very much what Dorothy said that you need that feedback loop and how do you break that trend, right? Um, so I have seen examples where Yelp culture is amazing. There are uh, non-women managers who want to improve diversity numbers, who want to be more inclusive. Um, but the challenge they face is that when there's when they're interviewing candidates and they ask, oh, so like what, what are the diversity numbers? Like what does your team composition look like? And they hear it's it's all male. Um, so this especially happens in the infrastructure and the IT side of things. Um, women are hesitant to apply and join that team. So how do you break that barrier? How do you break that um, a trend and you know have that feedback loop? So for that, you need more women leaders who are paving the way for others. So the consequence of not having women leaders is that even if you the company has the right intentions, it's very difficult for them to break that barrier. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, Sorry, yeah, I, I was just going to jump in. Um, this reminded me of something uh, because I, I, I think I was going to say exactly the same thing. So last year, um, we, we did like virtual career booths. Um, and so I was in a career booth and um, it was me and another co, another EM from Yelp. And we had some people stop by and one of them stuck around for really long. Um, and at the end of it, we were like, you know, uh, we were just curious. Uh, she was asking us a lot of questions. She was like, I've just never been around to women engineering managers before. Hmm. And so can I just hang around for a little while longer? Because I just want to talk to you all. And it was it was it was just a great moment um and we spoke about that later uh because i think the biggest thing is that because you don't see people in those positions you don't know that you can do those things um and to actually be able to recognize that oh wait i can be an em a director a vp whatever it is is so empowering uh, even if it is just a dream role that you're trying to work towards um, and so I remember this incident and it kind of, it kind of sits with me, uh, maybe on bad days where I'm really struggling or things are not going very well. And I'm like, wait, I remember her face and how excited she was to be in that room um, and talking to us. So uh, I, I, I think that's the consequence sort of, which is we don't, we don't, we may not be allowing people to dream that they can be somewhere uh, that they want to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. We got a comment in uh, responding uh, from Mary A in the chat said, uh, is agreeing their messages don't land as efficiently because people can see and experience the gap of not demonstrating diversity at said organization, right? I believe they're responding when Sudio was speaking. Um, so it's definitely, you know, we see it in other companies, people have witnessed it. And it's really uh, lovely to hear some of these, you know, positive experiences you hear of on the other side of it. So thank you for sharing those. Um, so keep um, starting to get a few questions to come in. So I'm definitely going to start incorporating those as I take stock and take a look. So feel free to keep sending them uh, publicly in the chat or privately, as some of you are doing, which is fantastic. Uh, feel free to keep doing that. So uh, next on the pre-submitted ones that some of y'all sent in. Um, the next question is, what soft skills are key to moving into management or leadership positions in tech? I'm going to open this one up to anyone who'd like to, from the panel. I can start. Um, since tech is becoming more and more global, like since we all moved to remote work, a lot of us are working with um, folks from around the world. Um, so there's like cross country collaboration, time zones um, to understand people from different backgrounds who might not necessarily have the same education, have, may not have necessarily the same path to the career that you've had or the people around you have had. Um, I think the key here now is more emotional intelligence so that you can understand people, have empathy. Um, understand where people are coming from so that you're not as judgmental up front. Um, so I think one important aspect nowadays is definitely emotional intelligence. Um, the second that I have tried to practice throughout my career is having adaptability. Um, change in tech is the only constant. 
Um, there's new tech, new stack, uh, new systems around the corner. Every time you build something, after you've rolled it out, there's like, oh, do we need to re-architect it? Because there's this new thing now in the market, you know? Um, similarly, there are so many unknown unknowns that you need to always be prepared for uh, facing those. So I think adaptability and emotional intelligence, I would say, are the two primary things on my mind. Thank you for that, Surya. Dorothy or Nivi, do you have anything you'd like to add on this one before we move on? Um, I mean, I think that this is uh, uh, this is pretty obvious, which is communication. But I think what's interesting is uh, the channels of communication and how they've changed because we've gone remote. Um, and so focusing on your written communication or asynchronous communication as much as your live communication, something that I have been working on a lot is just getting better at note taking uh, because we have a lot of meetings, right? And so you want to be able to capture everything and how do you do it so that if folks in Europe, for example, haven't been able to attend the meeting, they can come back um, and read those notes effectively. Um, another bit of communication, which I think is especially important for an EM is not just the bit about speaking, sharing, but also the listening. Um, as someone who's an extrovert and tends to go on for really long, uh, sometimes it's it was something that I had to actively work on, um, especially in my one-on-ones with my um, engineers, uh, making sure that I give them that space to vent, to share, um, ensuring that they have that safe space that they can come back to. I love that. Thank you. And Surya and Nivi, I'll, um, I'm gonna bounce it over to Dorothy, but while I'm over at Dorothy, if you could, I would love that you talked about emotional intelligence and um, and adaptability. And uh, Nivi, you're talking about you know the balance between extroverted and introverted. If you can think about some of the tools that you use and you practice that you like to share about, I'd love to hear about those. But suspense, suspenseful music. Dorothy, is there anything you'd like to uh, to chime in on these soft skills? Um, yeah, I think. Uh, definitely plus plus to uh, what the other panelists have said already. Um, I think something that I found um, has been helpful as an EM is being very organized. Um, so I use Trello to keep tab to keep tabs on like everything that I'm doing each day. So in the morning, I'll kind of like set up a time for myself to try and. Um, like get myself in the mindset of all the meetings that I have to do that day and all the individual tasks that I have to do. Um, so in terms of like the soft skills, um, it's helped me to show up to meetings more prepared um, and ready to talk about stuff, um, but not necessarily spending more time um, in order to uh, be caught up in the meeting or anything like that. So uh, I think trying to like, get my personal tasks in order so that I can like be my best self, um, especially when interfacing with so many different like types of stakeholders um, has helped me to, uh, I guess, succeed in this role. Awesome. And Trello is getting a lot of love in the chat right now. Everyone's like, game changer, this thing is awesome. So check it out, y'all. Uh, love that. Um, and Nivi and Surya, are there any resources that came to mind as well? Oh, and thank you, Dorothy, for that. Clearly, that's very helpful for everyone. I was going to say Trello for organization and like putting your thoughts, but hey, it's already popular, so that's great. Um, about emotional intelligence, and I think practicing how to take a few minutes before each meeting that you go into, um, be it especially one-on-ones, because you can just go into the meeting and not remember what you, where you left off the last conversation. Um, and you know, what were the concerns that this one person raised and what was playing on their mind last week. Um, I think it's very important to maintain that connection and to let people know that they are important and you know, you remember things about them. So, taking that one minute before you enter a one-on-one -on -one or any meeting to kind of gather context and like place yourself in that space is really helpful. Um, I also keep notes to kind of remember things, small things like uh, people mentioned over a period of time, you know, like, hey, they love playing tennis or Hunter's Rock Francis, like 
but that, that's something that sticks in your head and it's amazing to start a conversation with something that you can connect over um i try to do that intentionally and about adaptability i think it's really important to change the processes that enable you to be adaptable at work so if you feel like oh there's there's a lot of process heaviness um which is making you do a lot of things that you're not happy about it's important to raise that and change that process um make that part of the practice of the team to let them be more adaptable as well so i think communicating that out and not being afraid of change it's more processy i don't have a tool for it so yeah <laughs> love that thank you so much nivi was there anything that you wanted to pop in with i i think surya um talked about you know having notes for people that you work with um i do this often um before my one on ones i go back and check were they on pto last week you know did they go out with family so i can check in on that um the bit about uh really listening it means to remember the things you talked about the things that they might have you know going on in their personal life um and checking in on that um uh so i, I think it's exactly the same thing taking that 5 minutes before a one on one uh and making sure uh you've gathered anything that you need uh to share um i did want to uh make sure that i uh, talk about this comment i see julia commented about the note taking uh she said make sure you don't get pigeon hole as the default secretary note taker just because you're a woman i think this is extremely important um and i want to kind of talk about that in the sense that when i was talking about you know taking notes or communication is interest communication um i i was coming from a place of not just doing it myself but um establishing that as a way that the team communicates and gets better as uh so i definitely agree uh julia plus plus i think that this is extremely important and to keep in mind uh and if you notice that you are automatically being asked to set up all the social hours for your team or take all the notes for your team that's a problem and that should be flagged yeah thank you for that and um thank please do keep the uh the comments coming in the chat and i appreciate uh y'all coming and and bringing that to the table uh related i uh, had a direct message which i think is on topic to that nivi so if there's you want to lead with it or uh anyone want to jump in uh, i had a question that came in that said how do you balance being warm and approachable stereotypically feminine traits with a direct strong leader i've made my written communications much more dry removing exclamation points and please for example in order to be more direct and to be taken more seriously by tenured people but i also dislike that it makes it takes away my personality have you found a middle ground that works for you um yeah i'm happy to talk about that um i read this and i thought about all the emojis i put into stuff before after and in between um so i completely know um what you're saying i think um this is something that i have not thought about a lot till recent actually um and it's also something that i'm actively working on i i do more in terms of reviewing my emails um in comms that go on on slack um i'll often write something down on my slack to myself and then edit it and then edit it a few more times maybe have someone proofread it before i send it out depending on who it's going to um i do think there's a balance uh, like you said you know between wanting to be taken seriously but losing a part of your personality um and i think that what works for me is uh i recognize that i add a couple of uh, please or thank yous um purely to people please let's use that term maybe um or to make people feel more comfortable um and those i've been able to eliminate and kind of create like a trigger in my head that no no you know this is you're putting it in here uh just because you want to like end it on a good note but this is a serious thing it's a lot harder to automate or to use a tool for uh, unfortunately except for setting checkpoints for yourself and keeping yourself accountable um but i i try to uh, i i hope that because communication is a mix of all your in person meetings as well as your slack conversations or any message conversations and emails that you're able to hold your personality um in in at least one of those venues uh truthfully 
Um, and that kind of brings that balance. So you don't feel like you're having to bring another person to the job. I don't know if I have to answer the question at all. Um, but yeah. No, thank you, Navy. I it's uh, I I appreciate hearing about your experience and you know balancing and also staying true and also know you know I heard you say in so many words it's a work in progress as well. Yeah, um, Surya or uh, Dorothy, would you like? I see you're unmuting, so I'm gonna say so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I would say if you're at the beginning of your career. Um, find a place, find a workplace that lets you be your authentic self. So where you see examples of company-wide communication going out where it's very informal, people are being true to their own personalities and are not afraid to be their authentic self, um, where the co company or the workplace is making effort to make people comfortable being in their own skin and presenting their true self to the company. Um, I'd say find that workplace in the, at the beginning of your career, because as you grow, once you get comfortable doing that, once you see other experienced folks being there, um, you know, like expressing themselves as they want to, um, you will get comfortable doing that. And then when you move on to like the next set of next workplace or next company, you can take that confidence and bring a change in the culture in that new company. And you can be that change. You know, you can enable or empower others to be their authentic self. So I was incredibly lucky to start my uh, tech industry career at Yelp, where this was one of the most primary things that Yelp focuses on. And there are seven, several ERGs to help support these things. Um, and I had an awesome female manager uh, who hired me and like instilled this confidence in me. So I was incredibly lucky. I tried to pass it on to the people I mentor, to the people I meet and try to do events like this to kind of pass that message on. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for that. And thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for passing on the message. Uh, anything else on this topic before we move on? Okay, um, or Dorothy, yeah. Um, I was just going to say that I tend to be more uh, direct in my written communication than I am in my in-person communication um, because like I'm a woman and I know that like my physical characteristics may already create some kind of um, bias or perception um, when somebody is meeting me face to face. So the warm and approachable side just comes up sometimes. Um, even without trying to, um, uh, like, deliberately thinking, think about how I present myself. Um, but in written communication, I feel like the directness is sometimes necessary, um, just because I want to kind of communicate the point that, like, it's not something that I think, it's just a fact. So I'm stating the fact, um, as well as, you know, the fact that it's kind of, um, getting the messages across in fewer words, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I guess in different forums, uh, I tried to take a different approach. Mm. Thank you, Dorothy. I love too, we're getting more comments in the chat. Soya, you're getting some love for your approach. Someone identified, you know, I love too that everyone has their own way of navigating these things and it's a personalized experience. There isn't one cookie cutter way to do it. Um, and it's um, just, I appreciate all y'all sharing your, your experience and strength here with everyone. Um, we have uh, some great questions coming in. Uh, I had a question uh, earlier uh, that came in directly that was uh, talking about uh, diversity. And uh, the, the question read, um, we've been talking about diversity in terms of sexism, and I'm wondering also about ageism. I'm older in my career and face some ageism because I think companies want to hire younger people. Does uh, Yelp hire older women in addition to younger women? And maybe if we want to talk about, you know, the culture there as well as the hiring practices as well. Uh, anyone want to jump in? Um, I'm happy to jump in and say absolutely. Um, I think at Yelp, uh, we're definitely... Um, well-rounded and we have an approach towards diversity and inclusion where 
We're trying to bring in people from all different backgrounds, ages, because we don't believe that everybody should be exactly the same um, and should fit into a mold to contribute. Um, an idea that my one of my initial managers brought um, into my head was very interesting, where it's not about fitting in, but it's about filling up gaps that exist with different people. Um, and so uh, age is as much as a factor as uh, race um, and uh, gender, et cetera. So all of these bringing people of different combinations is what actually makes you a company that ideates not just for a young group of people, but for everybody who uses uh, the product. Plus, plus to what Nidhi said, uh, I believe Yelp takes these protected characteristics very seriously and tries to mask it as much as possible. So protected characteristics like age, uh, marriage, pregnancy, race, religion, um, sex, orientation, any of these characteristics. Um, we make sure that in our interview cycle, the feedback is completely masking all of these things. So we, we use gender neutral pronouns. We don't uh, talk about any of these characteristics of the interviewee. It's very objective, it's very structured. Um, we try to remove unconscious bias from interview process as much as possible. Um, there's frequent trainings that the interviewers attend go through um, to make sure that we are aware of these unconscious biases and that this does not creep into our interview process. So there's a very deliberate action being taken in, at here, at least that I've seen to kind of mask these predicted characteristics. So the answer is yes, we don't have any bias and anybody who's you know fit for that role is uh, welcome to apply. Awesome, thank you. I think just adding on, Oh, please go ahead, Dorothy. Yeah, just adding on to the point about the interview process. Um, there are a lot of companies that start out with um, like a phone screen uh, initial round, which is quite technical um, and it requires uh, coding or problem solving with the interviewer. Um, and Yelp's process used to be quite similar to that as well. Um, but within the past year, we've actually switched to having a non-technical um, round for the first round. So it's more of a conversation about your past experiences and a lot of the soft skills really shine through in that round. Um, and I think the switch that we've made um, to do that in the past year has definitely uh, been a positive one in terms of diversity and inclusion because it brings in people that um, may not, like maybe studied all those kinds of like algorithms and data structures a long time ago um, and are not as like brushed up on those things and kind of having that first um, like part of the interview process be more about your experiences and what you're bringing I think definitely hits on um, the original question. Thank you for that. And I'd love to give a shout out to Paloma, who works here with Power to Fly. She's pasting all these awesome resources into the chat right now. So if you scroll up just slightly, you can check out Yelp's highlighted open roles, some but not limited to uh, those roles there. So some of the highlighted ones. Uh, so and you can also check out uh, more resources for Yelp's uh, tech events newsletter, there's a uh, sign up right there as well. So thank you, Paloma, for, for dropping those in. Yeah, go Paloma. <laughs> Getting some love in the chat, Paloma. You rock. Um, okay, uh, I had a great question that came in from Ruth Gonzalez asks, how do you make the case that as an IC, I'm ready to move to an EM? And uh, whoever jumps in first, also if maybe you could define what these uh, roles are for some folks that maybe aren't familiar with uh, those acronyms. Who would like to jump in? This one, Surya. I can... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I see is individual contributor. And I think that's what you start off as when you're starting your career. Um, you can be either an engineer individual contributor, you can be a product manager individual contributor. So whatever vertical you're in, um, that's what you start off as. Um, EM is engineering manager. And I think the question is, how do you 
express your intent to grow into management. Um, I think this should be an ongoing communication between you and your reporting manager. So at Yelp, for example, we have quarterly conversations, which is along with the regular weekly one-on-ones that we have, we dedicate uh, at least an hour every quarter to have conversations about, hey, how did the previous quarter go? Do some retrospective, uh, see if that uh, the set of goals that you set for yourself for that uh, quarter met uh, and you, you were given enough opportunities and plan for the next quarter. While you're having this conversation, you also plan for the next six months and the next 12 months so that you know that at any given point in time, here's where you're going. You know, here's this is the path that you're on. During these conversations, um, after you've been, I think, at a certain level, um, you can decide whether you want to continue as an IC or you want to be uh, going into management or you want to go into the technical leadership side of things and be a tech lead and a group tech lead and like progress that ladder. Uh, so yeah, these conversations come up at least once a quarter as part of the process. Um, but at Yelp, we have a very open culture where um, you're welcome to talk about these things to your manager. Um, so if there's no process in the company that you're working at, um, it's it's fine to raise it during your one-on-ones or your immediate meeting. If you don't see enough response from your immediate manager, then do speak to your skip level manager as well. Uh, make sure your voice is heard. Make sure your intentions are made clear and make sure you get a path um, course charted for you to you know, get to your goal. It's easier said than done, I know, but whatever your preferred form of communication is, if you feel like writing your thoughts and then sharing that is better for you, do that. If you are better at face-to-face -face communication, do that. Um, if you want to write a script, practice it in front of the mirror, in front of the cam, do that, but get your message across. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if I'm seeing more folks signing on too, so if you're just joining us, we have an incredible panel of three folks from Yelp here. I'm just going to redrop in the company page on the Power to Fly website where you can see the open some of the open roles and uh, great questions are coming in. As you can see, people are asking questions in the chat and uh, I'll be relaying those questions as well as some pre-submitted ones. So thank you all for being here. Uh, okay. So we have uh, another question here, which is, uh, okay, so earlier we were talking about soft skills. <laughs> so what role do hard skills play as you move up the ladder? So I, I love too, we were just, it's a good segue from where we were just um, visiting uh, with, you know, promotions and moving into new positions. So is there any ones maybe that, um, if anyone would like to jump in from the panel about something that either was helpful for you, maybe a hard skill that you acquired when you moved, or that you can already see maybe something that uh, you're working on that you'd like to share about as well. Um, I'm, I'm happy to talk about this. So um, I think that while as an EM, I don't actively code often, um, having spent time understanding how our systems work, um, has been extremely helpful, especially when you're working with the team to come up with plans, right? Uh, you're figuring out plans sometimes for what the quarter is going to look like, but also looking forward into the next year um, and having an understanding of um, the frameworks that work together, the different teams. Um, for example, my team, um, we own the business page. And so we have a lot of stakeholders that actually work on the page actively. A lot of engineering teams, a lot of uh, product managers. And so all the uh, the knowledge that I learned, uh, whether it was hands down coding or understanding more about the system architecture was extremely important um, and is extremely important in planning out for, okay, what is the team's focus going to look like on 23? What can we achieve? What can we not achieve? What are things that we have to do uh, to get to that uh, position? Um, I I think that it would be wrong to say that you have to know these things from the beginning, because if you were, let's say, an engineer on team X and you are now managing team Y, you don't know too much about team Y system. But that inherent um, understanding of how something works um, 
is definitely translatable. If not in anything else, then when you communicate with your tech leads or your engineers to understand more about the challenges they're facing uh, day to day while they're working um, on the code base. Awesome. Thank you, Nivi. And you already you actually answered a question that came in in the chat while you were yeah, yeah, Suri is like, yep, I saw that question. Uh, <laughs> are EMs at Yelp expected to contribute technically, write code as well, or just manage people? So I love that you were uh, touching on that as well, where it's like your experience, it can be uh, varied there. Uh, great. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick time check. We have 15 minutes somehow. It's just flying by, friends. Um, and so before I move on to the next question, uh, would either two of you uh, wanted to add anything there about hard skills? Um, I definitely feel hard skills are the most important when you're setting out, like starting out in your career. Uh, so establishing the skills that uh, Nivi was talking about, right? Like how do you understand how different components in a system work together? How do you understand a framework? How do you understand whether... Uh, how to review code and how to do system design and how to propose a new enhancement, you know. Uh, these things you learn at the beginning of your career, and that's something that's really translate uh, transferable. So hard skills, very important at the beginning of your career. Um, something that I personally like doing is to not stray away from those hard skills. Uh, so try and keep a personal project going where I'm coding in my favorite language so that... Uh, I am up to date with what's happening currently, and it's easy for me to do code reviews or read code. That's that's just a personal thing. Um, if if you are up, you know, further in your career and you don't get the time to do that, um, that's company hackathons are a good place to kind of go back to that engineering roots of yours and like maybe immerse yourself in like a system or a component or do some coding if you are interested. Um, at, at the end of the day, you're managing engineers, if you're managing, if a first line manager, you're managing engineers, you do need to understand what they're talking about. So always uh, keep keep yourself educated about what's going on in the system. Thank you for that. Dorothy, anything you'd like to add on this question? I guess uh, plus plus to what both of the panelists have mentioned already. Um, I think the I don't write code myself anymore, but um, I am sometimes reviewing other people's code, not officially, but just to see kind of the, um, what quality of output the team is producing. Um, and this is helpful to understand like how much each engineer is contributing and also kind of like the code quality that they're producing. Um, so that's been helpful. Um, also, when I interview candidates, sometimes I still conduct uh, technical uh, like coding rounds. So trying to assess um, kind of the the knowledge level that a candidate has um, is very helpful and uh, often where the technical skills come back to play. I love Surya and, and Nivi are both nodding a lot of that one. They're like, yep, yep. Yeah, a lot of demos, a lot of so you got to know what they're capable of. So you got to know how to do it um in order to assess that uh, i also want to give a shout out to your teammate who's behind the scenes here who's posting about open roles that's on the yelp team there so thank you for that uh so awesome um we have so many great questions left so i'm gonna skip ahead a little bit here because i want to hear about um awesome women in engineering so could you please you know i'd love to if you could share with a group we can do this popcorn style uh about um you know you all y'all's work with e, uh, the erg and um this person in particular is curious because there currently are no ergs at their company and they want advice on how they can build support systems outside of their work and maybe if you want to talk on like how to bring in ergs to uh companies that are maybe folks that are hoping to, to do that Uh, Surya, uh, can you got the start with this one? On? Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dorothy, please. Sure. Um, when I first joined Yelp uh, back in 2015, AWE had only been in existence for about a year or so. Um, mm. And it originally only started with uh, three women who came together across all different departments um, inside of engineering who just wanted a place to 
uh, meet and talk to each other. Um, throughout my time at Yelp, these three women ended up becoming like first line managers and then second uh, level managers. So they were definitely role models um, in the company. But when they were starting out, um, they uh, were also ICs. So it was a chance to kind of uh, bring people together, um, not necessarily to um, like try and grow and become a huge organization, but just because um, they wanted to kind of uh, meet other people that were like-minded and looking for connections with other women. Um, so I think uh, I kind of came in at a time when AWE was already established. Um, but really, I think it comes through teamwork. So if there is um, another woman in the org, doesn't even have to be on your team or working on the same area, um, but somebody that has a similar interest and desire in um, starting up a group, it really just takes two people. Um, that would be uh, the advice that I'd give. I love that. It only takes two people to start a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, plus plus to that, Dorothy, and then I don't think we've ever spoken about your history with AW. I'd love to chat about that at some time. Um, and another thing that I want to add there is if you actually officially want to start an ERG in your company, I think executive sponsorship, uh, like getting buy-in from at least one executive is definitely going to help things, help you move things along. So drafting a proposal about uh, so this is more processy. Drafting a proposal of what this group is going to be about, what your intent, what your objectives and goals are, and then finding an exit sponsor for this uh, group will be the place to start for you. Uh, about finding support outside of work. Personally, uh, back before this is pre-pandemic, I used to attend a lot of meetups that happen in your city. Um, so that is a place to meet people who are working on similar things as you are, uh, going through the same problems, all of these. So attending local meetups, and now I think a lot of these meetups are happening virtually, so you don't even need to kind of uh, travel that far. So look for local meetups, uh, be a part of organizations like this, uh, power to fly, like attend these meetings where you can make connections and establish um, contact through that. I would say. Awesome. Thank you. Nivi, anything you want to add? Um, I think uh, the biggest thing, uh, talking about specifically building support system outside work, because I think the rest of it we kind of covered, is that one thing I think that's extremely powerful is to stay connected with people even when they drift away. So if you have someone working with you in the company and they leave, uh, but they played an extremely important role in your life as a mentor, um, I find it very valuable to stay in touch. Uh, because now they're your support system outside work. Um, and you'll notice as you grow in your career that you build these cohorts of people um, that know about your history uh, from another company. And they can now be the mentors um, uh, that, uh, you know, you're like, I I'm, I'm struggling with this. What do I do? And they already know you on a personal level. Um, so I think that's extremely powerful if, you've, if you're already at work, um, uh, little way in to your career. Uh, that's an extremely important tool uh, to leverage as well. I love that. That's, that's great advice. And it's uh, becoming a theme this week too. We did a chat and learn yesterday and the, the panelist was talking about how she recommends staying connected with your previous boss, you know, and that because that person really knows you in and out, you know, and can potentially, you know, they might move to a different company, maybe they'll that's where you end up being, you know, it's, it's these, and these are the powerful connections that can happen over time. And uh, we have just five minutes left and I'd love to use that as a segue to someone asked about mentorship and how that has played a professional uh, in development in your professional careers and how you would advise connecting with mentors. You know, if you're lucky enough to have a boss that you liked in the past, that's one way, but there's uh there's other ways too. Um, Surya, do you have a mentor or do you have uh, advice for how to potentially seek them out? Uh, definitely. I think the professional network platforms have a lot of pages for uh, mentors, girls in tech, women who code, uh, Grace Hopper, like find 
attend these conferences, find the people who are interested in being mentors. There are other uh, groups that you can join, which is dedicated to mentoring um, high school kids and then, you know, like help their career from there on. So being part of this group will help you understand uh, or help you connect with mentors. Um, the other thing is, once you've started being part of this mentor program, once you've been a mentee, also remember to give back and be a mentor. Um, mm-hmm. That way you can sort of start the cycle. You know? That's great advice, thank you. Dorothy, anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, I guess um, definitely joining uh, organizations that um, like provide mentorship programs I would plus one to that. Um, in addition, I think it never hurts to reach out to someone that you like might secretly admire or like think of as a role model um, and try and establish a closer relationship with them um, because you may know about them, but they might not know about you. Um, and trying to just break the ice and say like, hey, I saw that you you know wrote this paper or you gave this talk. And I was wondering if maybe you could, you know, have a quick call and I'd like to learn more about you and just connect. Um, and like, I think the person in the worst case will be flattered and busy. <laughs> so they might say no. Um, but there are a lot of um, brilliant women out there, I think, who would be happy to uh, mentor folks that are trying to grow in their careers. So, uh, you know, trying to send a cold email may seem scary sometimes, um, but I think people are actually friendlier than uh, than you might expect. Mm. I love that. Thank you. And Nivi, anything you'd like to add on mentorship? Um, I think uh, this is in similar theme to what I said earlier, but like leverage a network. So if you're looking for, let's say, a, a woman EM, um, uh, you can talk to your manager and tell them, I'm looking for this mentorship. Do you know someone who's a good fit? Uh, reaching out to the other people that may not be the fit, but may know other people. Uh, that you can reach out to is extremely important uh, because they can see things that you probably don't have insight into. Maybe someone's been asking around for the same opportunity to mentor someone. Um, so use the network at work, even outside, um, and and try to be concise about what you're looking for so that folks can uh, help you out. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, friends. Well, we're almost out of time. Can you believe it? How'd that happen? <laughs> just been captivated by your answers and your participation this whole time. So time flies when you're having fun and you're learning stuff. So now we're gonna get, I like to say extra real with the team because I think you've all been pretty real already. So um, we asked these questions in advance. It's like a game show, right? Um, uh, How would you describe the culture in one word? And Dorothy said collaborative people at Yelp are helpful and willing to assist others. This is true of engineering and product, but also spans across all departments. I love that, Dorothy. Um, And in these last minutes too, uh, how can folks connect with you, Dorothy? Uh, My email is dorothy at yelp.com. So easy to remember. Um, I am also uh, on LinkedIn. So uh, I think Tenzin has posted a link uh, to our engineering blog. and I have a couple posts on there about awesome women in engineering. So feel free to check that out. Awesome. Thanks, Dorothy. And I, that's amazing that you are just Dorothy at this entire all of Yelp. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, how cool. Okay. Uh, so Nivi, we asked you, uh, what's your favorite part about working at Yelp? And you said the people, it's what makes it valuable, sustainable, fun, exciting, and everything in between. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and how folks can uh, stay connected with you? How can folks stay connected with you, Nivi? Uh, yeah, my email is slightly uh, more complicated than Nivi at Yelp. Uh, I'm Nivi at Yelp, but I'm happy to share my uh, LinkedIn in the chat and folks can reach out. Awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. So look for that in the chat, friends. And uh, Surya, we asked you, what are your top tips for someone who is interviewing? Research the interview uh, patterns of companies you're interviewing with and how and learn how to uh, uh, negotiate your worth. Woo, that one, that one's, wow, that one burns, that one's fire. (laughs) 
Anything you'd like to add on that, Surya, and how uh, folks can stay connected with you? Yeah, uh, definitely. I'll post my handle and my LinkedIn uh, profile link in the chat. Um, had had really good time. Time flies. I didn't know how the one hour passed. So thank you for that, Hunter. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you all. So that's it. That's the hour mark. I'd love to respect everyone's time. And I want to first say I'd like to give a digital round of applause to our panel. Thank you so much for being here and making the time today. It's morning, afternoon, and evening. They're all around the world. It's truly incredible. And I want to thank all of you, the participants, the listeners, for tuning in today. Uh, there is such great numbers today and asking your questions. And I know the job hunt can be hard, but there's good news. Yelp is hiring and you are being proactive by showing up today because showing up is the hardest, sometimes the hardest thing to do and you're doing it. So good on you. So give yourselves a pat of the back. Give yourself a round of applause. I thank you. And Francis thanks you, my dog. So thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you again to the panel. <laughs> have a good day.